Well, good morning, everybody. It's time for college worship. Good morning, pupils. Good morning, staff. Good morning, everybody. May the Lord be with you. Uh, this morning, this morning, I'd like to talk to you about Black History Month. October is Black History Month. Now, the contribution of black, Asian and minority ethnic people can obviously be celebrated at any time of year, but this month gives us an opportunity to celebrate what's over, often overlooked, the often overlooked contributions of black people in the UK. Um, I'm quite interested in football. And I read an article recently where some footballers, Premier League footballers, were asked their opinions of Black History Month. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton, also plays for England, said he saw it as a way of learning about role models. And it also challenged him to become a better role model in his own life. He said Black History Month is important because when you see someone that looks like you achieving great things, then there's no question of, I can't do that because I'm, a black, I'm black, because they've already done it. So he's very interested in role models, and role models are going to be a very important part of today's worship. Something I hadn't heard of before was the football blacklist. When someone's name gets put on a blacklist, it usually means something negative, but in this context, it's highly positive. Uh, the football industry has a set of awards given to black players and black people in the football industry who are acting as role models and inspiring the next generation of leaders in sport. And in 2020, the football blacklist included these three players, Wilfred Zahar from Crystal Palace, because he provided lots of support for nurses during the COVID pandemic, Marcus Rashford from Manchester United, for his campaign to work to raise awareness of child food poverty in the UK, and Tyrone Mings of Aston Villa for his constant challenging of racial injustice. And this morning I specifically want to talk about a, a, a person from history, a person from black history, and that's Walter Tull. He was a black footballer as well as a great role model. Now, Walter was born in Kent. Uh, his father came from Barbados in the Caribbean. His mother was English and he was one of five children. And sadly, his mother died of cancer when he was young and two years later, his father passed away of heart disease. So it was a pretty rough time for the children. And Walter and his brother, Edward, were brought up in the children's home in London. In fact, Edward was adopted from that children's home and became the first ever black dentist in the UK. But Walter loved football and he was encouraged at the children's home to pursue his love of football. The first team he played for was an amateur team, Clapton's FC. But in 1908, he helped the team win the FA Amateur Cup. So at an amateur level, he was very successful. And then in 1909, he was spotted by Tottenham Hotspur, one of the biggest clubs in the country, and uh, he became a player for Tottenham Hotspur. We've got a newspaper report from 1909 when Spurs played away at Bristol City, and the Football Star newspaper says of him that he is Spurs' most brainy forward, so clean in mind and method as to be a model for all. Men who play football, for all men who play football. Tull was the best forward on the field. So he was a good player, but not only was a good player, he was seen already as a role model to others. But sadly, that newspaper article, that, that quote I've just read to you, the title of the newspaper article was actually Football and the Colour Prejudice. Because in that match, there was a lot of racism uh, a lot of racist taunting shouted at Walter Tull. And the article actually says, let me tell those Bristol hooligans that Tull is so clean in mind and method as to be a model for all white men who play football. There was something that um, the uh, writer 
wanted to be very, wanted to write something very bold about what he was observing, that in fact, the person that was the role model was on the pitch. And he was the black player and the white fans were not role models at all in the way that they criticised him and used racist language. After Spurs, he moved on to Northampton Town, Northampton Town Football Club, um, and made 111 appearances for the club. But then 1914 came along and it was the First World War. So Walter Tull's football career was brought to an end whilst the war was in um, was carried on. Now, in 1914, they wanted lots of people, lots of men to sign up for the army. Um, and one of the ways they did that was with these propaganda campaigns and propaganda posters. And young men were encouraged to join the army with their friends and their colleagues from work. And these were known as pals battalions, where people that fought in the battalion actually knew each other. They had relationships with each other because they were mates or they were work colleagues. And uh, footballers were targeted. They were fit young men. Uh, and they were in the public eye. And if they joined up into the army, then other people might follow. And in fact, Walter Tull was the first Northampton town player to sign up for the football battalion. As the poster says, play the greater game and join the football battalion. Well, Walter fought in the war and at one cent, uh, stage he was sent home after the Battle of the Somme, a terrible famous battle in World War I. He had shell shock. Today we would diagnose that as post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, in those days it was called shell shock. He was sent home to recover. But then he went back and because of his leadership skills and his character, he was actually trained to be an officer, a second lieutenant in the army. Now, this is another first in his career. Not only was the first black player, black professional player to play for to play so a big part. He was the world's first professional football player to play on a um, on the pitch other than goalkeeper. And uh, he was also the first ever black officer in the army to actually lead white troops. There was a rule that said if you were non European heritage, you couldn't become an officer but they changed their mind for Walter Tull. In Italy, he led 26 men on a night raid against an enemy position. He and his men crossed the cold river into enemy territory and before returning all unharmed, despite coming under heavy fire, his commanding officer said, this is the sort of guy that should be awarded the military cross for brave bravery. And he was put, his name was put forward for gallantry and coolness and the Citation said he'd certainly earned it. Sadly, the military cross was never awarded to him or his family. And in March 1918, Walter led an attack on German trenches. So this is getting near to the end of the First World War. Now he had to cross no man's land and that's an area of open ground um, and came under a great amount of gunfire from German machine gun posts and was hit and was killed. And so Walter's football and army career came to an end. His body was never identified. His grain is not, grave is not, un, is not known. Um, however, his name is immortalised on the memorial at Arras in France. One of the dead that was not recovered. Now, very few people, I think, have heard of Walter Tull, um, but Northampton Town fans definitely have. And he's a proud uh, player from their team. Uh, they're very proud of him. Uh, and there are quite a few statues in Northampton, um, plaques on walls, and also the road to the stadium, the Walter Tull Way, is named after their hero. There's also a memorial garden with an epitaph to Walter Tull and it says through his actions Walter Tull ridiculed ridiculed the barriers of ignorance that tried to deny people of colour equality with their contemporaries. His life stands testament to a determination to confront those people 
and those obstacles that sought to diminish him and the world in which he lived. Now, British footballs today have chosen to make their disgust of racism known by taking the knee at the start of each match. And it's a gesture. It's a gesture to remind us that racism towards black footballers is not just history, it exists today. And the idea of taking the knee was first enacted by this American football player, not soccer, but American football player, Colin Kaepernick. And he dealt, he knelt, sorry, during the national anthem uh, before a game in 2016. And his protest was against the lack of attention given to issues about racial inequality and police brutality in the US. And by kneeling, he was referencing a anti-slavery image that was used of a, of a kneeling slave with the words, am I not a man and a brother? It got him into a lot of trouble, but a lot of other players followed. And now England, England football players um, and British football players are taking the knee to stand against racism. Before the Euros uh, last summer, the England manager Gareth Southgate wrote a letter it was a letter to the nation of England. It's published in newspapers. And in it, he supported the choice that made by the England squad to take the knee at the start of each match during the Euros finals. And he said, our players are role models. And we must recognise the impact that they can have on society. We must give them the confidence to stand up for the things that matter to them as people. It's their duty to continue to interact with the public on matters such as equality, inclusivity, racial injustice, while using the power of their voices to raise awareness and to educate. So the England team were very much supported by their manager. So Walter Tull, he had many, many roles throughout his short life. He was a son, he was a brother to, his, to Edward, who was in the, in the uh, uh, children's home with him, he was an orphan, he was a footballer, he was a soldier, an officer, and finally a war hero. And I think we can add, he was a role model to that list. Now to become the world's first black professional outfield player and the first black officer to lead white troops in the British Army would definitely require the values that we have as a, as a school. You need ambition. You need hard work and resilience. And he showed lots of responsibility. And many footballers today act as role models as they demonstrate every match that racism is not a thing of history. And we all need to help to stamp it out. Marcus Rashford, um, when his mural, the mural of him was vandalised after he missed a penalty in the Euro finals. Um, Lots of people showed their love and support for him. And amongst that were messages of how he was very much a role model for the work that he does both on and off the pitch. So now for a short time of reflection and a prayer. Who are my role models? Do my role models provide me with the examples of ambition? hard work, resilience and responsibility. And if you'd like to join me in a prayer, help us to value the positive contributions made by people in history. Help us to use the stories from the past to help us make good choices in the present. Amen. And before we finish, can I just invite you to look out for the diversity groups that we're going to be setting up this year. Each year group we hope will have a diversity group, an opportunity for people to meet together to talk about diversity issues. Um, things like ethnic identity, LGBT plus identity, disabilities, sexism, things that make us different uh, but 
are, are issues that need to be addressed and discussed in school. So look out for the information about the diversity groups that will soon be coming out to you. And thank you for listening. Bye everyone.